So I wanted to provide some guidance here on the migration endpoints that we have in a hybrid system. So firstly, the endpoint is something that the Office 365 connection uses, or the MRS backend, which is the mailbox replication service, to connect through to the on-premise system to be able to access the mailboxes and to get the data out. Now you'd think then that the, although the migration endpoint is set up inside the hybrid configuration wizard, in fact, it's one of the last steps that you do, that it creates that connection, that you would be able to see it in the on-premise office, uh, sorry, exchange system. Um, that is not the case. Indeed, you can see here if I look at the, the local host and I look at the migration tab and I look at migration endpoints, you'll see that it is blank. And indeed, if I go through PowerShell and I get migration endpoint through here, let's have a look at those, that will come back with nothing as well. Now, this is perfectly valid. This is because the migration endpoint into the on-premise system is managed solely inside the Office 365 environment. So let me jump over to that and I will show you how that is to be done. So we'll close these windows and get out of that and jump into the Office 365 system and go into the admin console. And the item we want here is going to be the exchange online system and it is in exactly the same place that we just looked on the on-premise system which is in the recipients tab and under migration you'll see that we can see any batches that we have running that type of thing but once that comes up the key thing here is this little dot here with migration endpoints it should populate there we are endpoint one now what it's doing here is saying, yes, it is an exchange remote move as a type. It has a local username. Now, this is the service account we set up for hybrid that has full access to all the mailboxes to get in. And you can see some of the other settings here. So if we were to go into the PowerShell for 365 and, and connect in, and I'll just do the connection here. Now, this is the script that I have on the one of the other sessions uh, about connecting to Office 365 through PowerShell. So we'll just let that uh, let that happen. And if I do the same command once that's ready, which is the get migration endpoint, we should see the endpoint one appear. So if we do get migration endpoint, same command as we tried on premise, you can see there we are endpoint one. Now, one of the prereqs for having a hybrid system working is that endpoint one there, as you can see, needs to be functional and live. Otherwise, I can guarantee that absolutely nothing is going to work on hybrid. If that endpoint is failing, you are unable to migrate any mailboxes whatsoever. So how do we test that to make sure that that is configured correctly and does have an item in there? So what we can do is we do test migration server availability with the endpoint and we have to specify the endpoint name which we get from that identity now before i present her, i'm going to tell you that this is going to fail because what i've done is i've broken the certificate on the on-premise system and you can see the type of error we get now we can see that there's an endpoint there and we can attach to it and we can start mailbox moves we can do all those things but they will absolutely always fail because this fundamental item here is not correct so that's our first troubleshooting point so we're going to go off and uh, and fix that certificate and fix that connection and then come back to what we need to do here okay so we've gone away and fixed that little certificate issue that we had and now we can run that test again which we will do excuse me test so, uh, and we use the same endpoint that we had before. And there you can see it comes back pretty much straight away with a result saying success. So now we know that our endpoint is ready for migrations. Now, what if there was no endpoint there at all? Let's suppose the hybrid configuration wizard failed to create one and for whatever reason, and we have no endpoint available to us, what are we gonna do with that? So firstly, what we can do is we can go in manually and we can create one through the GUI. So if I jump back in here, it is possible on the endpoints. 
to just have our little plus button here and create a new one. Now, the only thing with that is, when we say obviously exchange remote, um, we have to supply an email address. Now, this is because it's giving us very limited information about what the endpoint actually is in this case. What the GUI wizard here is doing is it's going to take an email address, which is a local user, and perform an auto discovery on that to work out what the server it should connect to actually is, the fully qualified domain name from that. Now that not, may not always be what we want. We might we want to set up a secondary uh, CAS server and have a, a secondary endpoint for any testing, that type of thing. This is not going to work in that situation because um, you've got to have a way to tunnel through to that. So what I did was um, I put together another article around creating a migration endpoint using PowerShell instead, which we do again from the Office 365 tools. But I'm going to give you what the, the gist of that is now. So let's go back to our PowerShell here and we'll type in those commands to create that new endpoint. Now, the only thing we really need to know about the endpoint is really the details about the user we're going to use to, to perform the MRS functions, which is indeed going to be that service account we had, and also give it a name. So firstly, we'll encode the credentials. So we'll call that uh, variable MRS creds, and we'll just do a, a get uh, credential on that, which will give us our pop-up. So I'm going to provide it as the NetBIOS name, backslash, and then account name and give it the password there that'll go in and accept those and then quite simply we just have one command which is new migration endpoint we will give it a name and I'll call this one endpoint 2 to be very original and it's going to be an exchange move the remote server which we're going to use is going to be mail.talisoft.com and the credentials we'll use are coming from the MRS creds and we'll hit OK on that. So you can see it's come back with the endpoint 2 created. Now what we can do as well is we can do a quick test on this one as well and see what that comes back with point two just as a, a validation that everything is correct and as you can see yep a successful item in there if we do a get migration endpoints we should see two in there and we do and now i just jump back into the 365 console and have a look at our migration endpoints that are available here and there we go, endpoint one and endpoint two created successfully. So that's all I have for you now. So thanks for watching and uh, please remember any questions, just fire them at me more than that.